जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन बल्लभवा गिरिवाराधा हरी यशोदनंदना ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदना ब्रज नमोनतीरा वनचारी जय कुंजा बिहारी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे जय राधा माधव मुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जय ओम विष्णु पाद परमहंस परिवार जी का चार स्टोर सस्ती मिले भक्त विदान स्वामी शिल प्रभात की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव विंद की जय नामाचार शिला हजार ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कावर श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत राधर श्री वाषा दि गौर भक्त विंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की जय नवदीप महापुरुषाम की जय मिथुरा वृंदावन धाम की जय गंगा माई यमुना माई की जय तुलसी महारानी की जय भक्त देवी की जय नाम श्री की जय कौ प्रेमानंदे हरे हरि बोल ऑल ग्रोइस टू दर्शन मुल्ली अटीज हरे कृष्ण ऑल ग्रोइस टू दर्शन मुल्ली अटीज हरे कृष्ण ऑल ग्रोइस टू दर्शन मुल्ली अटीज हरे कृष्ण ऑल ग्रोइस टू श्री गुरु एंड गौरांग हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु यस वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस session of bhagavad gita we are resuming after two week so we'll continue uh, studying uh, you all can repeat after me few prayers before we start reading bhagavad gita om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om bhagavate vasudevaya ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चुनोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास जयात्मधीर नष्ट प्राएश अभद्रेश नृत्य भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी 
जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे तो वी आर रीडिंग भगवद गीता चैप्टर थ्री विच इज कर्म योगा एंड लास्ट टाइम वी स्टडीड टिल टेक्स्ट नंबर ट्वेंटी टू और ट्वेंटी वन You can, you all can remind, right? Oh, chapter nineteen, I think. Twenty says we will learn. Okay. Okay. Yes. So twenty. Okay. So we we read from sloka number twenty of Karma Yoga chapter three of Bhagavad Gita, and this section is going to discuss. why people have to work last time we discussed why does people need to work but then comes why even great people have to work like someone think someone like god has to work in this world because essentially if god is great and he he is not dependent on anyone then why should he work right so very very important discussion going to happen now here krishna is explaining to arjun about All of this. Okay, so we'll start with text twenty. Karma deva hi sanset dim. You can repeat after me, you all. Karma deva hi sanset dim. Astita janaka daya. Astita janaka daya. Loka sangraham eva pi. Loka sangraham eva pi. Samprasyan kar tumar hasi. Sampashyan kar tumar hasi. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shla Propad, Kedwara Propad ki jai. Kings such as Janaka attain perfection solely by performance of prescribed duties. Therefore, just for the sake of educating the people in general, you should perform your work. Purport. King Janaka, king like Janaka, were all self-realized souls. consequently they had no obligation to perform the prescribed duties in the vedas nevertheless they performed all prescribed duties just to set example for the people in general janaka was the father of sita and father in law of lord shri ram being a great yogi of the lord he was transcendentally situated but because he was the king of mithila a subdivision of bihar province in india he had to teach his subject how to perform prescribed duties lord krishna and arjuna the lord's eternal friends have no need to fight in the battle of kurukshetra but they fought to teach people in general that violence is also necessary in a situation where good argument fails before the battle of kurukshetra every effort was made to avoid the war even by the supreme personality of godhead but the other party was determined to fight so for such a right cause there is a necessity for fighting although one who, who is situated in krishna consciousness may not have any interest in the world but he still works to teach public how to live and how to act experienced person in krishna consciousness can act in such a way that others will follow and this is explained in following verses hare krishna so um here uh, krishna is telling arjuna that arjuna um even someone like king janaka who is direct relative of lord sri ram which means then janaka king janaka was very much self realized person and he doesn't have he was a great deity of the lord ram but he still he since he was a king so which means that was his prescribed duty to rule the kingdom and ensure that everyone is happy and contempt and peaceful so he did his job um, right and propad explaining here that even arjuna all the pandavas they were duty of lord krishna so they were not essentially they don't need anything because you know they have everything because when you have bhakti you don't need you have krishna bhakti you don't need anything but here you see in, in mahabharat or throughout life of pandavas you know 
you will see they have been working throughout you know they were king so they had to take care of a lot of things and especially in this fight great fight mahabharat um krishna is inducing arjuna to fight right in the battle of kurukshetra somebody can say you know one way krishna is says that you just do bhakti you don't have to do anything but now he is asking arjuna to fight right so the the way to understand this that um and some people claim you know blame that not claim but blame krishna that he he actually made this mahabharat war actually arjuna don't wanted to fight so kauravas pandavas don't want to fight but he ensure that they fight but prabhupad explaining here that before the battle of kurukshetra every effort was made to avoid the war so krishna tried to avoid the war and ask kauravas or is led by duryodhan that please give at least five villages you know the kingdom was the whole earth you know the pandavas were ruling whole world and hastinapur which is nowadays delhi was the capital of the world and duryodhan was not even ready to give five villages to the pandavas because they were chatriyas so they can't be beggar they can't do business they have to administer because you know chatriyas has to uh, administer or collect taxes from people um and to give protection so they can't become brahmana they can't become vaishya they can't become shudra so they needed some villages and krishna on the behalf of pandavas went to hastinapur to request duryodhana party please give five villages and duryodhana replied i will not give even a piece of land equivalent to the tip of the needle without fight so this was the statement from duryodhana so what do you expect now you can't avoid this fight because now there is no other way because the opposite party is not ready to negotiate anything without fight so so krishna is not to be blamed it is the duryodhan who who was not ready to compromise on anything or not ready to share the rightful shares even five villages of land uh, of people right so sometime here krish prabhupad explaining that vaishnavas they don't have any interest in this world because they know that everything one day will get finished with the with the death nothing in remains even this body we have to lose it right but they work for the interest of krishna we just like arjuna is being asked by krishna to work similarly sila prabhupad was asked by his guru maharaj to go and spread these bhagavad gita bhagavatam teaching in western world so he came in in boston and then went to new york to spread this movement now international society for krishna consciousness is con is all over the world and we you know we are building temples we are distributing books we are having holding festivals big big you know thousands and thousands of people come and we do so many things you know so then people can question oh you say that everything will finish then you build temples you have festivals you have so many big big buildings why do you do that so the purpose propad explained and he showed us by his example that the he is all these things is to just spread the message of bhagavad gita and bhagavatam to masses to everyone in the world right and that's the mission of chaitanya mahaprabhu he wanted his name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare is he predicted that it will be chanted in every town and village in the world and now you see in social media almost every country or city in the world are holding hari naam sankirtan on the street people are chanting dancing feasting you know doesn't matter what country what creed what religion they come from everyone is is participating in the sankirtan movement so the prediction by chaitanya mahaprabhu who is krishna himself who came 500 years ago in in west bengal 
is coming through now via the you know by the medium of Prabhupada and his disciples and his grand disciples, right? So these predictions given in the Sastras are not just mythology or just mental speculation. They are given by great authorities and therefore we should follow. Like here, Janaka is setting example. Why he is working? To set example for everyone so that people don't become lazy and crazy, right? Because when people become lazy and crazy, then the life gets ruined. We know practically. In our own life, we have been sometimes becoming lazy and crazy, right? Everyone has been through it, I hope. I mean, I, I have been through it, you know, sometimes. Yes, crazy, right? So, and then sometimes daily, you know, because sometimes, sometimes we don't want to get up in the morning, we are lazy. <laughs> and sometimes we are crazy because we want to spend time on television for five hours, right? Mm. Or social media for hours, you know. So we know it. And because why we do that, why people use a lot of social media? You know, if you question this, why do people spend a lot of time on social media? Because after working hour, they have nothing to do, right? Because people don't want to talk to each other. They don't want to cook. So everything they order online, tomato, tomato, whatever, Uber eats. They don't want to clean houses. They don't have, they have a laundry. They will do once in a week. So what to do daily, you know, after job. Then you spend time. You have to spend time on something. So you spend time on social media, right? Earlier time, when people used to come from the, you know, we're agriculturals, we were all agriculturists. We are coming from farmer family, almost everyone in India and all over the world. Farming was the main business. And when people come from the farming, they used to discuss, they used to talk with each other, each other. They will eat, you know, dinner early. They will sleep, get up early in the morning, around four or five, you know, do their proper rituals, finish everything. Everything was very much engaged. People were not free. So they were not lazy. They were not crazy. But now mental health problems, health problems, social media addiction, all this is because there is no set examples. The examples we have are crazy. Because examples, are, okay, you use social media, one hour Facebook, one hour Instagram, one hour Twitter, one hour LinkedIn, one hour maybe 30 minute WhatsApp status, and maybe hours on WhatsApp just looking at messages and thousands of groups going on here and there, right? I feel like this this is kind of trap. And, and this is not an example, a right example, because creating a mental health issues all over the world. And because of a lot of, you know, we, we don't get sleep properly because we use a lot of screen time. You know, what do you call it? Screen time on phone or laptop or television, right? Uh, so, the examples right now we have is not suitable for our well-being, our happiness and peace. And therefore, we have to go back to Bhagavad Gita and get the right example. Because the correct examples we have are wrong and they are not working for us. Right? How do you know something is wrong? Because it doesn't work for you somehow. Right? It, because sometimes people say, oh, right and wrong is a perspective. You know, something may be wrong for you, right for other, right for um, someone wrong for you. Yes, it is prospective, but if something which is true should work for everyone. And you can say something which is wrong should not work for everyone, right? So you, of course, you can build a consensus on truth, on, on, on right and wrong. And that's how nowadays world works, consensus. Like what is the most um, highest prevalence of things which works, right? That's how you test percent what do you call uh, probability of success, right? Probability of success. How much successful is something? You say, okay, this is this percent successful. So a lot of things which we do is not successful. Maybe it works for you, not work for other. But there are certain things works for everyone, right? Like drinking plenty of water in a day is good for everyone's health. Nobody can deny it, right? You need water, enough water getting a good sleep is good for everyone. Doesn't matter whether you're, you know, Muslim, Hindu, Christian, American, Indian, Japanese, you know, 
healthy food is good for everyone right peace of mind you know is good for everyone you can't argue on that okay no some good for someone good not good for others right but we don't have right examples to get all this in our life and therefore we have to go back to bhagavad gita and we'll continue reading text 21 now antaji you want to read text 21 i'll read prabhuji yes yadhyadacharati shreshtas tat deve tarojanaha sayat pramanam kurute lokas tadar nuvartate Whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. People in general always require a leader who can teach the public by practical behavior. A leader cannot teach the public to stop smoking if he himself smokes. Lord Chaitanya said that a teacher should behave properly before he begins teaching. One who teaches in that way is called Acharya or the ideal teacher. Therefore, a teacher must follow the principles of Shastra, scripture, to teach the common man. The teacher cannot manufacture rules against the principles of revealed scriptures. The revealed scriptures like Mano Samhita and similar others are considered the standard books to be followed by human society. Thus, the leader's teaching should be based on the principles of such standard Shastras. One who desires to improve himself must follow the standard rules as they are practiced by the great teachers. The Srimad Bhagavatam also affirms that one should follow in the footsteps of great devotees and that is the way of progress on the path of spiritual realization. The king or the executive head of a state, the father and the school teacher are all considered to be natural leaders of the innocent people in general. All such natural leaders have a great responsibility to their dependents. Therefore, they must be conservant with standard books of moral and spiritual codes. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, so here, you see, Prabhupada is explaining here a couple of definitions. Who is the leader, right? How do you define a leader? Now there is a, nowadays a lot of discussion on leadership skills, leadership management, leading the people, leaders, servant leaders, but who is the leader, right? Leader means teach by example, right? It's not that you become leader by the age, you become more aged, you naturally become a leader, and then what do you do? Do nonsense. That's what's going on here, right, in the world. Because people become leader by power, position, education, but not by character. Because leadership is not degree, right? <laughs> Do you know any degree in leadership, you know, that by getting that degree, you become a leader? No. No. Because leader means to lead and to lead whom, right? You may become leader on the paper, but nobody wants... Leader means you should have followers. That's the definition of leader. If I say I'm a leader, then leader of whom? There should be followers. Right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, <laughs> alone self declared leaders right now it is. You have on LinkedIn or, you know, I'm a top voice, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, you know, Facebook. But I'm not talking about social media followers because you may have thousands of social media followers, but what is the point, right? Um, there is no real followers. Followers means who learn from you and aspire to behave like you behave, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So somebody can say, yes, there are so many people who are followed by a million people and people are leading in such a way and people want to follow and say, yes, you know, so actors, politicians, bad people, a lot of, lot of, you know, criminals, they have millions of followers, you know. But then you hear the news that they commit suicide. What kind of leadership is that? Which means what they are teaching to their followers that, oh, all of you should follow me and then one day you should commit suicide. <laughs> right? This is, this is their character. This is their morality. This is their ethical code that commits suicide. 
on little problems in life. And we say, oh, I follow this actor, actress, politician, star, celebrity. But in their personal life, they're messed up. So, so we should be careful whom we are following and wh whom we consider our leader, right? In our mind, right? And then comes teacher. Who is the teacher? So leader should behave in such a way that others should learn from it and follow it. And then Prabhupada explaining from where a teacher or leader gets information from. Because anything in this world you do has to be validated in some situations, right? So we have a limited life, you know, and a lot of things we study, we have not practically tested it, right? We just take it from the books. We, we all learn from books, right? From our education so and so far. A lot of things which you do in your job also developed by someone. You don't test everything. You just take it and you improvise on it. You realize it, you implement it. A lot of things has been developed, the framework, the structure, the, the protocols, the, the workflows are developed by someone. You don't question it. You just, you know that it works. You, you test on one time and then if it works, you go on. You don't question every step in that. Likewise, to, to become a teacher requires certain characters, certain, certain, certain principles to follow. Where you get from? You get from Vedic knowledge, from scriptures. If somebody can say, no, I don't want to look at the scriptures. I want to develop my own philosophy. Good luck with that, right? <laughs> because I'm sorry, sir or ma'am, your philosophy is not yet tested. And who is going to be experimental person for you to test your philosophy and ruin their life, right? That's why it is said you should be careful whom you are following on social media or anywhere you are watching, listening, because you have to see what is the source of their knowledge. If it is mental concoction and their own philosophy, then you are the experimenting guinea pig for their philosophy. And most likely it is bogus, because if they look at the scriptures, they, don't, they won't be interested to develop their own philosophy, because there is everything in the scriptures. In Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. You don't need to develop anything new, right? But since they don't do, because they want to prove themselves that I am right, you know, I am the best. In doing so, we followers become their experimental guinea pigs. And we suffer because we take that philosophy, try to do in our life, and then it doesn't work. They go to the jail, you know, so you see the news that they are already ruined, they are doing nonsense. And then you become heartbroken and then you lose interest in religion because you think, oh, this, because you had a bad experience with someone, you think everything is bad. This is how the world works, right? That's how people make mindset. So that's why we should be very careful. In our life, there are three leaders we all, all, all get subjugated under. Like first leader is head of government, right? We, we, wherever you live, you have certain kind of government, lower level, higher level, mid level, right? And then that's like a more of a state or country, you have a government. And then in individual family, today is a father's day. So you have a father, right? Everyone had a father or have a father or will have, if you're born, you will have a father, right? And even if you're not, there is eternal father. So what is the role of father to set example for the family, right? But if father itself is not trained to become a leader, trained to become a teacher, because these position, head of a government should be leader and teacher, an acharya kind of lead by examples. Father has to be teacher and leader, lead by examples. And then third is school teachers. Third level, when you go to school, you have a teacher who teaches. Now, teachers just teach by books. 
not by character, but I don't know in when I used to go you know school or all of us you know of the same age when 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 went to the school, we were not just learning book from the teacher. We were looking at their character. Oh, he's a such gentleman, or she is such gentleman, nice, good-hearted person. We were looking personal qualities, not looking in book book and degree. A lot of time I didn't knew what degree my teacher have. I just knew, oh, this teacher is so caring, nice, clearly explaining, good in character, morale, right? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. We never asked them, oh, where did you study? How many grade you get? What degree did you get? We don't care, right? Like, like same thing for the father. We don't ask, oh, father, how much you studied? Do you know this? If you don't know this, then you are not a right father. From father, the expectation is the care, love, protection, security, right? And sometimes father gives hard lesson which you don't like. But father, because you trust him, because you know that he is the ever well-wisher for you, father and mother, you trust by, by blind, like because you know that this is the person in my life will never betray me, will, will never cheat me, will never misuse me, always looking for my welfare. That's the definition of father, right? But if the modern fathers are not trained to become a father, what will happen? Disaster. Because next generation is not learning from the character of the father. And that's why families get spoiled. When you know fathers get old, they are not impartial to their children. They favor certain children. They don't help other children. There is a fight, right? They their character is not good. They are you know they are sitting on the phone watching bad movies, and then the the grand grandchildren are getting exposed to such things. Why? Because these people never became a father. They never become a leader of the family because their character is bad. They may have earned money, position, power, but not character. Because character doesn't come from your age, education, knowledge, money. All these doesn't give you character. Only if you get in association of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, will give you strong moral, spiritual codes with and if you practice those codes, you can build your character. That's why we, we emphasize so much on Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam and the scriptures, Ramayana, because this, this provides you moral and spiritual codes, which you if, you, if anyone practices, can build topmost character. And if you have a character, you can get everything in the world. Right? Even if you're not educated, even if you're not well-to-do, even if you're not rich, even if you're not beautiful, if you have a character, that's a beauty, that's a wealth, that's a power, that's education, right? And that's why we put so much emphasis on, you know, um, this is Sloka is saying, whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards he set by example, he acts, all the world pursues. Right? That's why, you know, even some some leaders which you remember now, Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, all these people were not rich people. You know, they were not highly educated, but they they represent certain characters, certain moral and ethical codes, which they practiced in, in their own life and showed us how to lead a life. And in this our case, you know, Arjuna, Pandavas, Krishna, right? They all these deities which you read in Bhagavatam, they, why we read? Because we want to learn from their life, these codes, moral and spiritual codes. And when we have examples, then we can easily practice, right? I can give you hundreds codes, but if you don't know where how to apply, and the only way you know how to apply is by learning from examples, someone who applied, right? Because there could be some some things not understood clearly, right? Codes, Pavitra may be nurse, coding is how so hard. Why? Because even if you code one person codes, other person doesn't understand. <laughs> Next. 
राइट पवित्र अनुजा माता जी टू रीड ओके आल रीड ओके नामे पार्थस्ति कर्तव्यम नामे पार्थस्ति कर्तव्यम त्रिशु लोके सुकिंचना त्रिशु लोके सुकिंचना नाना वाप्तम अप अप अवाप्तव्यम नाना वाप्तम अवाप्तव्यम वर्ता ये वचकर्मणि वर्ता ये वचकर्मणि translation and purport ocean of pratha there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary systems nor i am want of anything nor have i a need to obtain anything and yet i am engaged in prescribed duties i'll read again this is krishna selling telling to arjuna ocean of pratha there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary system nor am i want nor am i in want of anything nor have i a need to obtain anything and yet i am engaged in prescribed duties purport the supreme personality of god had described in vedic literature as follows tam ishwaranam paramam maheshwaram tam devatanam paramam cha daivatvam patim patinam paramam prasada विधम देवम भूनशे नैद्यम नाथस्य कर्यम कार्यम करनम च विद्यते नाथत्समस्त का च दृश्यते परशक्तिर्विधर्यशूर्यते स्वभावकी जन्म बला क्रिया च so here is the definition of supreme personality of god listen carefully the supreme lord is the controller of all other controllers in the world there could be 100 controllers but he is the controller of all of one that's a god mm -hmm. he is the greatest of all diverse planetary leaders there could be hundreds of leaders thousands of leaders but he is the topmost everyone is under his control all entities are delegated with particular power only by the supreme lord they are not supreme themselves he is also worshipable by demigods and the supreme director of all directors therefore he is transcendental to all kind of material leaders and controllers and is worshipable by all there is no one greater than him and he is the supreme cause of all causes that is the god next one this is from swetasthar upanishad he does not possess a bodily form like that of that of an ordinary living entity there is no difference between his body and his soul he is absolute all his senses are transcendental any one of his senses can perform the action of any other senses therefore no one is greater than him or equal to him his potencies are multifarious and thus his deeds are automatically performed as a natural sequence right so much information here right but you can make bullet point about the, if somebody say that you know this person is like the god then you should make out list it from here you know there are at least 15 20 things controller mm -hmm. of our controller greatest of all diverse planetary leaders everyone under his control you know he gives power to every living entity he is worshipable by demigods and and he is the director of all directors transcendental to all kind of material leaders controllers and worshipable by all there is no one greater than him and he is supreme cause of all causes next he does not possess a bodily form like that of an ordinary human being if somebody says you know if this person is like a god then they should have different bodily form there is no difference between his body and soul definitely you should check whether your body and soul is different he is absolute all his any other senses can do other all other senses part like his tongue can tongue can do what 
tongue can see. You should check in that person yeah. that whether your tongue can see it. Your can your eyes can you speak, right? And then no one is greater than him or equal to him. Definitely, you should check this one, right? <laughs> if he says, "Oh, there is better than me, someone," and oh, and then you are not a god. His potencies are multifarious, and his deeds are automatically performed as a natural sequence. And if even if some, someone has everything, then at the end you should check. Do you do anything? Then he say, "Oh, I do this, this." Oh, then you are not a god because it it should automatically perform your actions. You don't have to do anything. So, because people don't read these scriptures, they nowadays accept God, anyone God, you know. Somebody can show you magic trick, oh, he's a God, right? Magician becomes a God, like Jadu, mm. right? You know, somebody can cure a disease, oh, you're a God. Somebody can give you wealth, oh, you're a God. Somebody can give you children, oh, you're a God, right? God is so cheap nowadays, right? <laughs> You can get God, right? You know, it's, it's a funny when you read Bhagavad Gita by Prabhupada and then you realize, oh, how pity definition of God I was given. I didn't knew this, you know. God is great, but how God is great? Nobody explained me. God is great, okay. And then who is God? There are eight, you know, 84 hundred thousand how much 84 crores right so many gods every 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 other temple you see oh he's a god he's a god he's a god she is a god right so much confusion why because there is no proper education right you want to say something Pravitra? no Prabhuji. no you can say if you want to say no problem no, no, Prabhuji, I don't have anything to share. Yeah, so we'll read the next paragraph, which I, I left. Since everything is in full opulence in Supreme Personality of Godhead and is and existing in full truth, there is no duty for Supreme Personality of Godhead to perform. One must receive the result of a work has some designated duty. One must, One who must receive the result of the work has some designated duty, but one who has nothing to achieve within the three planetary system certainly has no duty. Yet, Lord Krishna is engaged in the battlefield of Kurukshetra as the leader of the Kshatriya because Kshatriya are duty bound to give protection to the distressed. Although he is above all regulations of the revealed scriptures, he does not do anything that violates the revealed scriptures. Right? So it is said, that how do you test the character of a person? Do you know how do you do test a character of a person? By watching how their actions are. No. Your behavior is or her. Sorry, Mantaji. I cannot hear you. I think she the... said the behavior. No. You all know it. I know. If he or she is spiritual. No. Yes. You give them power. Somebody may be so humble when they are poor, the moment you give them power or money, then you see their character. Mm. Right? Yes. That's how you test the someone's character. You know, give them power. Power of influence, power of money, power of education, power of leadership, power of anything. And then they reveal their real character. You know what they are. Mm. Right? So if, if you give power to someone and even after getting power, the person is not puffed up, then he has a godly quality, right? 
Yes, but if sir. by getting the power somebody gets popped up, mm -hmm. then he mm -hmm. is demon. Mm -hmm. He's just hiding mm -hmm. that character. Mm -hmm. And you have seen in your life, you know, in certain people, they were very nice when they were not well to do, but the moment they become rich or you know, mm -hmm. get well off, then they are become demons like crazy, right? <laughs> right. Like in our childhood, they, we had a lot of friends. So some friends were very meek, humble, nice when they were studying because they didn't have a lot of money or power and all. When they become bigger, you know, you know get a good job in big company, good package, they go crazy. They're drinking drugs, addict, wine, women, everything they're doing now. How? Because they got power of money, a power of influence, mm -hmm. power of everything, right? They can do whatever they want. That's a power. That's the power corrupts, right? Okay. So I think we'll end here because I have to do something. Um, and I started late, so I have to cook my you know lunch for okay. Quran, everyone. Mm -hmm. So we'll end here. And if you have any questions, doubts, please ask. Prabhu, you have one question? Yes. Um, like in this present world, like if you are trying to follow someone, but initially, like for years, like one year or two years, it will be like, mm -hmm. um, we we all we always see like we are getting only some good guidelines or good things to follow, but at after some time we at any situation or something we mm -hmm. see one negative thing with the uh, with the person whom we are following then all the uh, the 10 points that we followed everything doesn't like everything is doubtful at that point Sorry. so is it like we always have to follow a scripture like we can we not follow a person who is there in our, um, who we see in our real time, for example, in our office or in our career, when we try to grow, we always try to see who, I mean, the persons who are in front of us, right? The leaders in office or something like that. Can we not follow them? Following and learning is different. Like we may learn mm -hmm. something just mm -hmm. for to get work done, right? Mm -hmm. That may not have any impact on my character in general, right? Because I'm just, you know, doing my job. It's my part of the job to follow them and just do it. And that doesn't get in my heart. It is stayed mm -hmm. in my mind and I just, just do it. That's not following. Following mm -hmm. means that you are 100% accept whatever they do and whatever they say. Right? Okay. Yeah. What do you know? That's called... In, in, a, in our education, there was a very common question. Who is your ideal person? You know, very common question used to come when I was small. You know, uh, who... So somebody will say Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, like mm -hmm. all big, you know, freedom mm -hmm. fighters, right? Lakshmi Bai or, you know, big, big, depends on which state you are, you will have your own set of. Yes. Right? right. I couldn't understand what does it mean ideal, you know, I, I was not, but I just used to say because everybody has to say something, you know. Mm. <laughs> we just say it, you know, they don't feel like, oh, I'm I'm poor person, I don't have any ideal person in my life. <laughs> Somebody will say my father parents, you know, my teacher or my high school teacher or whatever. Mm. But I couldn't understand who is ideal means. Ideal means not just, you know, I like you or I just, I like one quality. No, you should like everything. Mm. That's a yes. follower. That's mm. a real follower. Following means you just follow it. There is no question of questioning, right? Mm. Like if we say we follow Bhagavad Gita teachings in Bhagavad Gita, then mm. you just take it, implement it. Mm. You don't question it in the beginning or anything. 
even while you're questioning it, you have a faith in that, right? Yes. It's not that you're questioning because you don't have any faith. Yes. Because anything you question, start with faith. That's where the question starts. Okay, I have faith, but I have a doubt, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, you can learn. You can do the task, do everything. But one thing we should be careful. Mm. All the jobs and workplaces and all this we do in our life is not foolproof. There are a lot of hidden agendas and so many things going on. So we should never take it personal. You know, just take as a professional work. Yes. Just for my, you know, well-being or living, I'm making money. But I'm not going to build my character based on their their philosophy or their ideas, right? Yes. Because it's not tested. And if, you, if we do it, then we become an experimental person. And if they fall down, we fall down because, oh, I was the wrong person. And then we don't trust anyone because, <laughs> because mm -hmm. we had a bad experience. So we have to be careful whom we are following because if you have a bad experience, you will lose your faith in faith itself. Mm. Right? Yes. So that's why we go back to scriptures because this will never cheat you. A person can cheat you. Mm. A place can cheat you. A country can cheat you. But the scriptures, they can't cheat you. Yes. Bhagavad Gita is slok, is slok number 24 in chapter 3 will never come to you and ask you, give me money. Right? <laughs> but if you apply in your life or anyone applies in life, they will be happy. Because these are well-tested principles which Krishna is providing us. He is the God. He knows everything. What is right, wrong. Right? Hmm. And that's why it's a code. Code means what? Code means... It has been tested, tried, and now it's implement, yes. ready to implement. Yes. Like ready code means, is ready, means you click it, you get it. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not a code. It's still in development. This is ready, mm -hmm. this is, you know, what do you call, ready code. This, you can just implement it. Mm -hmm. Other, other th philosophies which people are propagating is still in testing or development. And you never want to use something to produce something which is still in development or testing. You want something ready. Mm -hmm. Because we have a limited time in our life. We don't want to test so many things. What if it doesn't work? And most likely 99% time it will not work if it is in testing going on so many steps. Right? It did, Like you said, it may work for a certain time but not for other times. So what to do? Mm -hmm. They may be good in five things but bad in five things. Or good in ten things, bad in one thing. Mm -hmm. But the one bad code can destroy the whole workflow, the whole mm. process, right? Mm. Then you can say, oh, I write 10 good code, just one bad code. Why don't you give me credit? But they will give credit to someone who has 10 to 10. Everything works, mm. right? So likewise, we have examples. We have Acharyas. We have Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. We don't have to go to anywhere to learn. Especially mm -hmm. moral and ethical codes, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, professionals, job, all that we learn, but just for learning and doing, not taking in my heart, okay? Mm. Because all these are coming, you know, these four defects. Every, mm -hmm. every, everything is created by humans. Everyone is human, and they have four defects. What mm -hmm. is first defect? Forgetfulness. Mm. Cheating, tendency to cheat, for, mm. right? Imperfect senses. All the senses yes. they will use to create or say something is imperfect. So mm. anything is done is never 100% perfect, right? Now, then there is tendency to cheat, right? Yeah. Because imperfect senses, right? So this, what is third, fourth one? Imperfect senses, senses tendency to cheat, Four defects, right? Let me see. Very important right now. So I'm just oh yeah. First, everyone can everyone will commit mistakes. Mm. There is no one who can say I'm no, I never committed. Second, everyone is illusioned. Why? 
because we have imperfect senses. We cannot perceive things as it is because we are limited in everything. Mm -hmm. Third, everyone possess tendency to cheat others. Mm -hmm. Some or other way, everyone cheats. Fourth, and all his senses must be imperfect. You know, there is limited things I can see with my eyes, limited I can think with my brain, limited I can speak, limited I can hear. So how can I, if my senses are imperfect, how can I say, do, act something which is perfect? And if somebody says, oh, I am perfect, then you must know that this person is cheating. Hmm. Right? Yes. So four, four defects everyone has, and because of these first four defects, what are the four? First, everyone must commit a mistake. Hmm. So second, everyone must be losing. Hmm. No, he, not everyone, but Everyone is sometime illusioned in their life. Yes. Everyone sometime committed a mistake. Third, yes. everyone must have tendency to cheat others at some point. Yes. And fourth, all of our senses are imperfect. Mm. And therefore, we can't access the truth, absolute truth. And therefore, we have to go back to Bhagavad Gita to access this information, which is given by God himself. And therefore, he doesn't commit mistake. He is not illusioned. He doesn't cheat us. And mm -hmm. his senses are imperfect because we just read that God definition of God is that your senses are perfect. What mm -hmm. perfect senses means that each sense can do the job of others and it is limitless. Right? It's not that, mm -hmm. oh, I can eat five rasgullas. Krishna can eat the whole world, you know. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's a kind of elaborate. Discussion. Yes. Hope that helps, Matini. Yes, Prabhuji. Thanks, Prabhuji. Yeah. So we should be happy. At least mm. there are there are million and billions of people out there. They don't have an access to this information, and somehow or other, because of mercy of Sila Prabhupada and DOTs, we have information and access to this. And that's why you are here Sunday, you know, afternoon or night and discussing a Bhagavad Gita, right? So we should feel fortunate, very fortunate, in mm. not an ordinary activity you are doing. You're very fortunate in this world that mm. you are able to access Bhagavad Gita. There are people who have Bhagavad Gita, but they never read it, you know? But we are very fortunate. We should feel very fortunate, very happy. And, oh, I may have hundreds of problems in life in my life, but oh, one thing is good in my life is that oh, I chant Hare Krishna mantra, I read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, and I'm not mm. thinking nonsense about others, you know, best thing. And I don't yes. have time actually. I don't have time to compare, I don't have time to these all these nonsense things. It destroyed my peace, right? Yes. Okay. Should we end here, Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji. All right. So we'll end here. Vang Chakal Taruha Sichakar Pasan Dev Chapatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishno Vyonamonama Jay Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Galadhar Sri Vashanti Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Sri Prabhupada ki jai, Mbhild Gaur Bhaktabind ki jai, Gaur Premanande, Hari 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Hare Krishna, see you next week, sure Prabhuji,